I think I, I this is the caster thing to say, right? But I think this especially based on what we've seen thus far, this will probably be the best match of the night. You might be like, what about special versus Scarlet? There's potential there, but I've seen that a little before. I don't think I've ever seen Puck versus Scarlet. And on paper, um, why is he a barcode? Why is he, what? Okay. Jimmy. Why are you a barcode, Puck? Okay, I can fix this. We got it. In the top left. From Team Newbie. From Canada. One of the most fan favorited Zergs. The Queen of Blades, known for greed and speed. And knowing how to read, I, <laughs> it is Scarlet. And in the bottom right, in red, the second best American Protoss. Unfortunately, there is there is one American Protoss who has really uh, been a cut above, but he's right behind him. It's Punk. Protoss versus Zerg. It's a round robin group, which means everybody gets prizes for winning matches, everybody gets prizes for participating. There's a bonus for winning more um, because here we like winners. So far, Puck has been struggling, but he has a chance to avenge himself. I, I feel like Puck's greatest enemy is himself. I, that's true for many players, but but more dramatically than most, to a greater extent than most players. Puck is one of the players who will put himself in a great position and then outplay himself out of it. So, in, in, ca in case anybody was, in case it was unclear, the number one American Protoss is Neeb, <laughs> the three-time WCS champion. Um, just in case you forgot about him. Stargate is the textbook here. I'm just I'm just trying to refocus. We've had a lot of matches tonight and we have more and uh, take a moment to recollect. Stargate is essentially the textbook. The Stargate Pioneered by Neeb and other players, but Neeb definitely, unlike unlike Neeb, now that we're on the Neeb train, unfortunately, Neeb, so we asked Neeb if Neeb wanted to play in this tournament, and we also asked Cyril, and from what I understand, they, they, re they responded with, I'm practicing for BlizzCon, which, okay, BlizzCon compared to damn cup, I don't know, potato, potato, uh, but Neeb and Cyril, I would argue, are, are pretty solid contenders for BlizzCon, um, unfortunately. And especially wouldn't want to be playing people like Special, uh, who will also be in the brackets. So There's always that interesting downtime be before BlizzCon, because the WCS circuit is over. There's GSL Super Tournament, which is the last opportunity for many players to get WCS points this year uh, from Korea. And then there's going to be several weeks of well, BlizzCon's coming up and that's about it. Um, so so how much practice will be done? Like, who are you focusing on? Who's in your group? Stuff like that. Will Cyril and Maru be in the same group? Probably at this point. So maybe it'll finally happen. But speaking of neither of them, Puck... Burning down a bunch of Zerglings. Scarlet so far. Been essentially uncontested. 
not a single worker has been killed on either side. Puck is opting for a very quick Robo Bay. No, Puck thinks he's M canning over here. Forge, Robo Bay, and Twilight Council. We are having a full, just pacifist agreement. There will be a little bit of poking from two oracles and a phoenix. Absolutely no aggression, no real aggression out of Scarlet. She's heading straight up to alert. She's gonna have 70 drones at five and a half minutes. Like. Take notes, Platinum players. <laughs> now, in Platinum, you can probably get away with that against most people. In in here, only if you've actively scouted your opponents going for a quick third and is opening Stargate with, without uh, a follow-up push. So, that, that's important. Immortals on the way. The Robo Bay is done. Ruptors are potentially the choice against Mass Roach. Colossi only... Well, Colossus... You don't really see Colossi against Zerg. The only scenario is, is very quick, like a Hydralisk push or something. Well, we're going to see it here today. This could end up being like Roach Corruptor. Or something along those lines. All right. From Scarlet. She's only got 66 drones. Okay. Now now adding more on. I was wondering if that was the stopping point, like in a laser style timing. What? What are you doing? What? Puck, 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 puck. A fleet beacon? Is he rushing a mothership? There is no other explanation. What the puck? Because it's not like he's going to build one carrier. Oracle's coming in. They see the spire as well. Very important. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! The queens. Okay, they watched out. Phoenixes with range. I I am like 80% sure this is a, a, a reaction to the spire, and the original plan was mothership. Okay? I am... I don't think... I think we were going to go mothership, but guess what? Now, now that the spire's been spotted, we're going to swerve into... The most complicated army. All he needs is Storm, and then he will have the most complicated army you can get his Protoss. Phoenix, Disruptor, Sentry, Blinkstalker, Oracle. Like, this isn't Hogwarts. How are you going to handle all that spellcasting? I don't... I, ev almost every single unit has an active ability. So... Oh, Puck. He has a little bit of everything. And, and now a mothership! <laughs> uh, infestation pit is on the way for Scout. I would argue in this scenario, still the standoff continues. Barely any units lost. 16 to 1. One zealot against a handful of lings and drones. The forward disruptor, looking to disrupt any plans. That's a whole lot of ravagers, and much like your mother, those ravagers have a large hitbox. Oh, looking for shots? Oh, direct it! Oh, opens things up! Another one! That one's dodged out. Oh, massive hit! The Observer doing a great job here. I wonder if Scarlet's realizing, but the Corruptors are spraying the Nexus! Is that gonna be enough? There are Phoenixes. There are Phoenixes. There are Phoenix. Where are the Phoenixes going? They're, they don't know where they're going. In the front! Oh, beautiful stasis from Puck! Another Disruptor shot! Gotta look for the Ravagers! Finds two! The main Nexus is dead! And just like that, zero to 100. Beautiful stasis, that's that's a pseudo force field. The best force field you can have is your opponent's units. So, the first eight minutes were completely passive and now massive blows. I'd say despite losing his main nexus, thankfully not the one making the mothership, by the way, Puck taking the victory, but Scarlet has well, actually, a surprisingly low number of drones. She's added more. Um, but creep spread across the entirety of, of well, mid-map, working towards the other side. Puck is nearly maxed out himself. He's got nine gateways, two robos. His mothership is complete. Banelings from every which way. There's no storm. 
Like I mentioned, that's the one thing we're missing here. The disruptors are the only splash damage. Oh, the queens. Getting a little ahead of themselves. Is Baneling speed done? Of course it is. Adrenal glands. Plus two melee attack. A very important upgrade for Banelings especially. Allows them to one-shot probes if they don't have armor upgrades. And two-shot Templars if they existed. Those are some changelings. Puck's not having any of it. He has one Colossus just to kind of help out. Okay. All right. He's got a lot of force field. All right, Harry. You're a wizard or you're dead. Those are your choices. He recalls. But he says these units are dead. The rest. Oh, okay. The He has blink, right? He can blink maybe onto the banelings. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You don't have energy. Oh, Puck, Puck, Puck. The recall's all over the place. He can recall to the main. Scarlet is scrambling back. Come on in, everybody. And there's sentries. He can force field the ramp. What a play. What a play. The play from Puck. The Ravager is coming through, but he can force field again. Where, where's all the spell camp? Beautiful stasis. Incredible disruptor shots. Everything for Puck. He shoots his own Colossus with disruptors, but I think he'll be okay with that. All the spells coming off. Okay, wait a second. There's more. Another beautiful force field. They're trickling underneath the Ravager. Incredible disruptor micro. Puck, it all comes together. I don't... Finally, Puck finds the engagement. And he locks it down. Force fields, disruptors, recall. Blink. Welcome to Protoss. You're a wizard, Puck. And like I said, that is the type of play, if it went wrong, Puck would look like, why are you throwing the game? But if it goes right, it goes so, so right. Oh my god. That... And not even, like, he did that all without, there wasn't even Storm. There weren't even any storms. Where were the storms? He didn't need them. Disruptors are good enough. play it took a few few matches for him to warm up but I mean Scarlet I think a little bit late on the hive tech which is weird to say at like the eight nine minute mark but when you're literally not like neither side is attacking I mean, we're not getting over that anytime soon. Will, can lightning strike twice? I, I haven't seen something like that in a little bit. I'm glad we were able to see it here in the best damn cup. It always like, when you watch Puck, you see the plan but the plan rarely comes together. Like, there's always so many moving parts. And in that case, about as many moving parts as there could have been. Oh, God. Let's, let's hope uh, he can show some... Let's, let's hope he can show something similar, but Scarlet also wins some games, so we can get five games. All right, rigged. I think Scarlet probably going to want to adjust a little. She went for essentially everything, but ended up with, like, a Ravager Baneling army, which is not... If you're sitting back, unharassed, and you come up with a Ravager Baneling army, and it does nothing, you kind of just wasted all your opportunities. Like, Ravager Baneling is an army you build when you either don't have time, or you want to hit a time. But it's not one like, well, I can do whatever I want. I want Ravager Baneling.
just go bloodbath them. I don't know. Honestly, I, I'm not sure which uh, which race favors this map, if if any. Um, I believe Scarlet picked Acropolis, but I'm not 100%. So this would be maybe Puck's map pick. In a best of five, though, only a couple vetoes. That was such a greedy game. I think Puck outgreeded Scarlet there by, in the production tab, within a within one minute in the production tab was a Forge, a Twilight Council, a Robo Bay, and a Fleet Beacon. So like, you have hundreds of minerals and gas invested in things that have yet to pay off. Never trust a pro. What are you doing? What's that piling for? I honestly don't know. Like, he's already got a Stargate in his main, so I have no idea. Like a proxy Dark Shrine or something? But does that even make any sense? Is it just to be a pylon? Glaive to Daps? I don't... I honestly... I got no guesses. Double Robo. He, he's obviously waiting for something. What? He keeps moving the probe! Hey! Stop it! Make a decision! Stop stressing me out! Come on! Puck! What are you doing? He keeps moving the probe! I don't... Right! Right when I look away! I don't... A Stargate. A hidden second Stargate. The next level mind meta. It's like, well, you know I have a Stargate, but two Stargates is very different than one Stargates. So. Uh, okay. An interesting choice. I. And it's, it's not even like a little hidden. It's just completely out of nowhere. So what does he build out of it? Are we going Phoenixes? Are we going Oracles? Gonna try to get lucky. Oh, beautiful pickup there. Gonna find some kills on drones. Drops the queen down. Put me down. I've had enough of this. So, Moracles then. He's going to be going up to Foracles. We'll see if Scarlet thinks of them as Boracles or maybe going to be Soracles. And if you read over the history, that'll be a whole bunch of lore. Okay, I'm done. One queen at a time, six overlords coming up for Scarlet. Getting a little supply block. This is a big gamble. The, the question is also, when do you use them? Like, when do you show them? The lack of, in, like, Scout's got to be coming in here like, Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. What are you doing? The third base is on the way. That doesn't look very weird. There's a couple queens in the main. I don't... Hydra lives down is coming up, but Hydra don't actually really counter oracles. Not in... Because the oracles counter Hydra's. Oh my god, three Robos? Calm down. He's he's. It's all went to his head after that last win. He's like, I can build whatever the hell I want. And it, he has yet to be proven incorrect. The triple Robo follow-up. Oh my god, another one is spotted. I don't think Scarlet has suspicions. Watch him try to, like, micro two different locations with triple stasis ward or something. Well, there's definitely going to be plenty of stasis. That's true. Wait, were the double robos spotted? Okay. Is it time? Hydras are about to pop, so this could be an anti-timing here for Puck. Here they come. I think the drones, do they need to run? They're easily going to burn everything here. You don't really want to pick anything up. The drones will run. Probes are dying at the same time. Seven probes died while microing this. So, 
No drones yet have been killed, or maybe just the one. There's not... there. Okay, there's plenty of energy here. Uh, oh my god. A lot of drones are dying. Okay, but... Uh, nope, nope. Um... 15 drones die, but so do many of the oracles. And once those oracles are gone, there's no follow-up pressure. Besides three immortals at a time. Plus two melee attack. Okay, so... How... How many oracles lived? Three of them. One of them badly bruised. There's no forge for upgrades. Plus two melee. Did this pay off? The answer is, eh, nah, kind of. He killed a lot. He killed five queens, eight hydras, 17 drones, but it's a lot of money invested as well. Now, if he starts going triple robo colossi, well, you now have the hydraless counter. Okay, you no longer have the counter. You got the kitchen sink as well, because those hydras don't stand a chance against multiple colossi. But plus two banelings, especially with speed, are dangerous. But, okay, so Scarlet does have four bases. She's got 74 drones. I think she just noticed the immortal count. Blink is on the way. Going for a hive. Yeah, the lack of forge is something here. <laughs> something. Thank you. The greatest commentary. Indeed, everything is something if you really think about it. That's a, lot. That's a lot of immortals. But until the Colossi are done, and they don't have extended thermal lands here. Important to note. Will there be a Spire? Da, 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 da. After the Robo Bay is spotted. The Triple Robo? I don't think it really registered until now. Like, oh my god. That is Triple Robo. 88 drones for Scarlet. Scarlet! Calm down! Oh my god! I mean, if it pays off, but... One Colossus is done. I think we're going to see an attack with three. He's going to be pretty close to maxed out as well. Warp Prism is being chrono boosted. A whole bunch of Banes. They will have speed. They will have plus two. And Banelings are not light units. They, are, they have no tag. Fun fact. They just don't have much HP. That's why everybody thinks of them incorrectly as light. Uh, so that means the Colossi don't do extra damage to them, but they do a whole lot of damage. There's going to be Stasis Wards backing up every flank. There's not that many Force Fields. The Stasis Fields are much more important. I'm not... This army is a confusing spread here. Oh, he dealt with this... Uh, this. Oh my god. Uh... The perfect force fields. Fuck. Well, until the Banelings get in, they're in, they're in! Oh no! It was going perfectly right up until it wasn't, but I think there might still. The Colossus is my crown back! Another, another cinematic looking set of force fields. The Banelings did get in. Very important to note. That was a, a very key point. But it wasn't quite enough, and with that second Colossus microed back... Oh no, the, the scout actually chased... No, you can't chase this. It's not over. The Scarlet, even though losing that base, still another base and plenty of drones. Greater Spire's on the way. Still no Corrupt... Okay, Corruptor's finally being built. Corruptor's and Brood Lords, both good counters to Colossi. Still more Colossi on the way. Storm. Puck has Stasis Wards all over the place. Scarlet will be allowed to stabilize, because if Puck pushed in further, there's a good chance he gets surrounded and eventually cleaned up. Puck playing a lot safer in this match. Oh my god. He, I, as, I, as he Colossus drop harasses in, in, at the 12 minute mark. Alright, Puck. <laughs> Much safer. There's still a Stargate in the corner. I wonder if Scarlet has realized that yet. 
154 supply, bases being retaken, but Puck, a, an even economy Protoss, or better, especially when you have access to essentially the entire tech tree. Scarlet had Hydras and Lynx. Broodlords are very important. They're a big deal. And the plus three melee attack, if we get there, can be very helpful as well. Storm is going to be huge for clearing out ground. One Broodlord not going to cut it. Two Broodlords, I'd also argue, not enough. Three Broodlords, a little bit better. And four Broodlords is a crowd. Ten or twelve would be a more game-changing number, but we'll have to see. These, This rock tower, this cooling tower can be taken down, do dropping the debris on everything. The one place... Oh, Puck drops the Zealots. There was no whole position, but the army actually comes back for these lengths. So Scarlet will be allowed to get the Broods Fleet Beacon is on the way, but the Broodlords are already out for Puck. For Scarlet. Got it. Plenty of links. And these are dangerous links. Plus two, plus one. About to have Adrenal Glands. Going on plus three attack. This army. Uh, the main links don't want to be there on their own. Where's the rest? Where's the ground army? Where's the ground army? The main links actually protect from the blinks. There's not... Well... The blinks go forward. The banelings wrap it around the side. Both sides maybe eye in that tower. The stasis ward in the back not making much of a difference. The broodlord's uncontested. Tempest need to be produced. He's actually building Tempest out of the proxied Stargate. Some more stasis, but Scarlet not having any of it. Are those Templar? Do any have Storm? One has Storm. All right, maybe a bit of a miscalculation there. Hawk needs to scramble now. Not quite ready to deal with the broods. Scarlet protecting them well. Scarlet maxed out, recovering from that first attack. The Zerglings are a real danger to these Zealots. The Zealots, a lot of the time, Zealots just kind of walk over beautiful storms on everything, but there's still so many Banelings underneath. Puck can't really contest it. He's just driving back out on the map. Scarlet forced to scramble back. Gotta be careful of the storms on the retreat. Storm's looking for things, but Broodlord's picking off stragglers. A couple Broodlords going to work. Broodlords don't really want to be disjointed in and of themselves. There are ten Broodlords now. The ground army still struggling to deal with this. Still very dangerous on its own with no Broodlords to contest it. One Broodlord picked off by some of the Stalkers. Tempest joining up to try to match this. There's not that many Corruptors. The anti-air is in the form of Hydralisks. But now that the Tempests are here, these Broodlings are very angry. Oh, are there Templar in the prism? It appears there are. Every single Templar is precious right now. Puck is pushed back to his side of the map. Scarlet. Gotta be careful of the storms. The Hydras run right through them. There's not much other anti-air. The Broodlord's very exposed right now. How many storms are there? Banelings rolling it. Maybe a couple force fields underneath. It's not clear. Going for the blink. Trying to target down Brood. Storms on everything. But there's so much damage coming out of Scarlet and Puck. It's unclear who's going to win the fight. The anti-air is drying up for Scarlet. But Puck's ground army is almost obliterated. All the stalkers trying to blink in. The Broodlord count is whittled down. A, a Tempest comes in from the side. Zerglings trickling in. The Broodlings eliminated. And it appears we're going to have a draw in this fight. The Tempest count is now high enough to eliminate Broodlords, but the Templar, the Immortals, and the Colossi, as well as the Archons, were wiped off the field. So... Scarlet can refill with stronger ground units, potentially, or go back to the Broods, because Puck can't really push with what he's got, or go for, uh, well, well, at this point, I, I guess sticking with the Broodlords is the best way to go about it. Otherwise, you risk enough Templar getting their storms off. A unit's lost heavily, hell, yeah. Heavily in favor of Puck, but only in the form of minerals, and Scout has plenty of those. The Proxy Star is figured out. Going to be... Well, that answers a lot of questions. Puck. A weird army, but a dangerous one. Multiple temps here. Templar and Tempest. Some Zealots looking for an opportunity to get damage done. Some Zerglings will need to be split off. Plus three, plus one with adrenal glands against just plus two zealots. They'll easily be ripped to shreds. 
Will anyone take down this cooling tower? Puck is expanding to the top right. Scarlet has that left side as well. <laughs> Didn't even finish off the Stargate. Who needs it? More broods. No mothership yet, and no infestors. Those are the uh, later game options here. Otherwise, both sides are nearly all the way there. Still eyeing that cooling tower. Revelation, great tag on this army. How many Tempests? Five of them. You don't want to have too many, but you don't have too few. Looks like that's enough. And with the tag, the Broodlords are going to be forced very far back. Flank coming around. There's just cannons to defend. The, the Zerglings should be able to deal with it pretty easily. They rip through the cannons. Who cares about your silly shield batteries? A lot of Archons here. The Broodlord count makes it so the Archons can't get through as long as they have enough of them. Are there, there's still just the one Oracle, so Stasis no longer a big part of this. Tag is required. Revelation is the technical term. So you can see those units from further away for the Tempest. Zerglings against Zealots, but the Zerglings... Not pushovers. Are there any Banelings on the ground? A handful. One or two storms can deal with them, but the Zerglings continue to stream through. This is not a hard wall, but it's close. This base is running out of cannon support. The Broodlords, another tag? Another tag. Spots the Brood. But these cannons will be ripped. In fact, Puck is mag... Puck is maxed out right now, meaning he can't warp in units, meaning he's going to lose so many probes so fast, 20 of them. Scarlet needs to defend. Beautiful storms on the Hydras, the, Bru the Banelings underneath, killing the rest of the Templar. The Archons will stay intact. This base is gone before it even pretended to exist. That doesn't even make sense. God, those Zerglings are so good. Words not often said at this stage of the game. The, upgrade, the upgrades on the Zerglings make them super dangerous. The base is eviscerated, and the probes as well. And Puck is not maxed out. He doesn't have a huge bank. He can't afford many losses like that. Will be replaced. A lot of zealots. At this point, mineral-only units at a premium. Well, everything at a premium, because neither player is banking up. Scarlet is barely maxed. Puck is right there. Can't afford a single... Watch out! Watch out! I don't... They can't hear me. All right. And they shouldn't either. The zealots working their way up. Are there zergling reinforcements going for some bane links? Corruptors can't deal with this. The rally point a little bit mishandled. Still just plus two. The Zerglings can't fight on their own. The truck. Oh, come and get us! Where are you going? Just gonna fight a handful of the Zealots. Doing pretty good. At the same time, the engagement's happening. The Corruptors are gone! Still another round of them. The Banelings working their way up. Scarlet losing some drones. The engagement's back and forth. The Broodlords trying to stay on point. Scarlet down to 63 drones. Puck at 55 probes. More Broodlords. Almost no anti-air. This is essentially making the Broodlord semi-banelings, where if there's not enough anti-air, they will die. The question is how much will they do, at what cost, I guess, is, is the summary. How many Tempests? Seven Tempests, ten Broodlords, five Corruptors. That destructible tower still... Oh, the Broodlords were not tagged by the Oracle. Giving a slight reprieve. A massive amount of Zerglings. More Broodlords at the back. Zerglings looking for an angle. I'm pretty sure they can beat that many Zealots. Yeah, Scarlet gonna get... Oh, there's a Storm. The Storm hits the Zealots too. I'm pretty sure they win that fight. The Zealots try to tuck themselves in, but... These Zerglings are doing way too much damage. The lack of armor and shield upgrades is starting to show. Are there shield plus one shields? That's it. The Zerglings are opening up opportunities. Trying to get in there. Still, walls and cannons are tough. The Zerglings are like, well, what, where else do we go? Looking for a shot. More Zerglings streaming across. Scarlet stabilizing. Puck starting to falter here. Still an insanely strong army. Scarlet doesn't have a huge bank. The Broodlords are tucked into a corner. But that is a corner that they can easily push back out of. Zerglings may be looking for an opportunity for a flank. They can't fight the Archons or the Templar, but they can fight almost everything else. Doesn't even care about these cannons. Gonna go straight in. One pylon, maybe. Going for the probes. The probes down to 54. That one taken out by the cannons. The army actually gonna come back. 
The cannons are gone. More working up. In fact, there's actually not... Oh, yeah. Shift killing onto the probes. The probe count still going to stay high. Puck making five at a time at 22 minutes. God, those Zerglings are good. I'm not sure what Scarlet's late game plan is, though. There's... Oh, there. Okay. As soon as I say it, Infestors. This is... Well, that's the last piece of the puzzle. The infestors to neural parasite, infested terran, fungal, everything is good. Much like much like the Oracle, you can find a use for every one of those spells. This base is starting to mine out. Scarlet has done a great job of, of keeping a hold of it. At some point, she can just give up this position. She's she's held on to most of the rest of the map. Or push through, option two, but we're getting to the point where giving up this base is a realistic possibility. Puck has two very divided bases now. Maybe a Nidus or something to get to the production. Puck is... He's getting antsy. Out on the map. How many Archons? He's got 12 Archons! A dozen! I, I came dressed for the occasion. All right. The Broodlords are pushed back. Scarlet playing the end game here. The supreme late game. Is there a wall? <laughs> I'm trying to bait it in. Looking for an opportunity. The whole army coming back. Okay, well. Our, yeah, that's that's why Lings are good against everything but Archons. Um, wow. <laughs> Whoop, Oracle taken out. Gets a revelation off. Going to want to replace that two at a time back at home. Dark Shrine, Vipers. We're exploring the final options here. And it's only game two of this best of five. Thunderbird is probably still on the table. The Broodlords, ooh, gotta be careful with those. Neither player had, they're maxed out, but they do not have banks that really, you, you can't replace these armies. Oh, those Tempests just ready to pop off. Hydras and Lings. A single viper. I think maybe looking for... Maybe looking for a mothership or something. Parasitic bomb? Blinding cloud? There are so many options. The Broodlord's starting to work through the top base. Puck is... Well, both sides are still kind of money. Oh, that's an expensive set of broodlings there. Oh, get over here! And you too! Okay. I'd say a pretty even trade there. Well, Scarlet losing a little more in gas. A lot of Hydra's Lings and Banes. Ooh, some Archon. Four Archons say no to this entire army and one Templar to back them up. Like, go get them, boys. I'm here if you need me. Puck finally adapting to these constant Zergling counterattacks. The production tab is an interesting place to be. Scarlet with a whole lot of upgrades. Finishing up. Plus three, plus three. Neural Parasite, some Hydra's. Puck just now adding on a little bit more. He's still on two, one... Plus two, plus one on the ground, and just plus two air weapons. I'm kind of surprised he's not upgrading more. But this... The ground army is like... this is It's become too dangerous in this air battle for ground armies. All right. Neither side wants to risk them. They're, they have minimal ground complements and then a massive air army. Where the ground armies can go fight in the corner. The thing is, that many Archons, you ain't fighting that without Broodlords. But Scarlet... You know how long it takes Broodlords to get to that side of the map? Like three years. Feedback on the Viper, but gets the Oracle before Revelation. Scarlet losing bases. She can replace them as long as she has the economy. Working towards that late game army. Gonna go for it here, it looks like. Pulling out. Whiffing on the Fungal, but gonna find the Abduct. The thing is, without the Archons underneath, suddenly there's nothing to clear up all these Broodlings and help with the Corruptors. Are we going into a soft base trade here? Storms? No, he's storming his own probes! Not a great idea. 22 drones, Scarlet dipping in the worker count. She's got enough to replace a little bit. This is all of Puck's mining in this corner as well. Also Scarlet's. 
Nobody's going to be mining at this rate. Puck is still maxed out. I think Scarlet is deciding what do we need here. The army supplies are even, and Puck is maxed out. So let that math work out. Oh, that's a, Puck won't know what... Nobody's going to be mining. It's a, it, that's it. We're done mining, everybody. Got to watch out. I heard a neural parasite, but that ended quickly. The Brood Lord's got to scramble back. Puck might be able to press in before the Broods get here. There are disruptors and probes and everything out on the map. And away we go. Here comes Scarlet from every angle. The, the Archons are too fat to recall. Neural Parasite. There are some Vipers in the mix. There are Disruptors, though, which can outrange the Infestors. Oh, watch out! Oh, he gets a... That, 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 that Templar storms its own army! The Broodlord's looking for an opportunity. A great opportunity, indeed. The Archons are just so fat. They really need to slim down. You'd think if they're just entirely energy-based... They'd be fine, but no! Here comes Scarlet with 180 army supply. The swarm is on the chase. I guess, okay, big storms all coming in from one angle, giving Puck the opportunity to fight against this. Are there disruptor shots backing off here? More disruptor shots on the center mass. Looking for the infestors! Got the infestors! All but one! But is the Zerg too strong are there any more templar at the back just blink stalkers blink stalkers are not gonna cut it trying to blink it back there's not that many brood lords left over some some in the front oh wait wait here come the disruptors from the back shots fired but they're gonna be targeted now that's it scarlet takes it the the swarm powers through across the map let's take a look at the units lost 464 zerglings Losing so much, but Puck, I think without the mothership, the ultimate army has carriers usually as well to, to kind of grind out a victory, but so much loss. But Scarlet holds on, giving up, I think giving up that top left corner, super hard call, or bottom left corner, whatever the far corner was, but just giving it up to deny Puck's mining, saying my army is better, 1v1 me bro. And uh, we're all tied up. Yeah. Puck, well, Tempests are, are a long-term unit. In a straight-up fight, the shorter the fight, the worse Tempests are, for the most part. Because the Broodlords continue whipping out their Broodlings. You got Infestors with Fungal to hold things down. Corruptors chunking through. Tempests are... It, he didn't really get much done. To be honest, with the Tempest. Besides not dying. The Tempest were to not die. But past that. Alright, Drickit. Thank you for tuning in. To the Damn Cup. The Damon Amazing Mega Cup. Sponsored by Damon via Patreon. Um saying here's some money I like these players can you make tournament um, and now we're here hopefully you're enjoying Already. Triton for game three. The only match we're waiting on after this, well, the only match after this is Scarlet versus Special. So, what I'm trying to say, it's all downhill from here, right? Okay, this is going to be why Scarlet changed to the red color and Puck changed to orange. 
making this confusing. <laughs> All right. I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy, do we have a graphic for this? All right. Can we get our graphics department on it? Okay. All right. Good. Cool. We're professionals here. I have no idea why Puck is a barcode, but... All right. There we go. Uh, with your Twitch Prime subscriptions, we pay for this elite graphics team with elite graphics software. Uh, so we need your support. Thank you. Nobody's cannon rushing. Nobody's proxy hatching. I'm disappointed. But that means we're lining up for a longer series. Oh, yeah. Can we put points on the board? There we go. I... I feel like Puck handled that last game super well. And remember, that was a proxy Stargate into Triple Robo, where Scarlet made way too many drones, which feels like I could have just said Scarlet played in the game, but gotta be precise, uh, and almost died. But then Puck kind of, it, it took him a little long to put together the maxed out later game army. Uh, and Scarlet actually kind of rushed up to Broodlords, and that was key. Not not hesitate, not trying to, like, max out on Hydroling Bane. No, no, no. Straight to Brutes. So. Will we see a repeat? Will Puck do some sort of spicy strat like that again? This is a smaller map. There's a lot more open space. Stargate is nearly complete. Phoenix first, so we're doing the most boring opener. I mean, the most standard, safe meta opener. All right, we're gonna we're gonna be looking to see does does he add a Robo and a Twilight? Maybe not in that order. Double gas in the next 15 seconds. Is it gonna be a an Oracle afterwards? Of course, it's gonna be an Oracle afterwards. Everybody knows that. Three, two, one, boom. All right, at this point, you can cast. About 9 out of 10 PVZs, I could probably, if you gave me a timer, cast without looking at the game. There was a... Okay, maybe like 8 out of 10. There was a time. It was like the beginning of this year. Was it this year, I think? Where it was about 9 out of 10 PVZs. It's like we're going 1 Phoenix, 1 Oracle, into Twilight Robo, into Archon Drop. Into third base, into eight gates, into push. Oh my god. There's the double. There's the robo. Another another oracle though. There's a little bit of extra flavor now. The Archon drop has fallen out of style a little bit since uh, the War Prism cost and the pickup range was nerfed. War Prisms cost 250 minerals now, and the pickup range is a little bit less. So it no longer is the same range as a queen, it's slightly less. So players have been creative, and they've come up with other options, which usually involve just making more oracles. So... <laughs> Immortal on the way. Immortal on the way. Okay. Twilight Forge in the main. I guess he just wants units to start it off. The Oracle and Phoenix, um, the Oracles and Phoenix provide a lot of scouting, of course, uh, as they fly around into your opponent's bases and see things and kill things. Maybe, uh, you, well, usually in that order. See, demonstration. He sees a lair, kills drones. 
lose his phoenix. What? The queens did not. Oh! That phoenix was born to die. Uh-oh. Adepts. Adepts. Adept. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. What am I? Is he a work gate? The adepts are out here for some reason. So, Scarlet catching this out. There's a surprising amount of Zerglings, but Puck reacts just barely in time. And we'll be holding on to the third. That was, that was very close. That was very close. A rookie mistake, really. Not leaving whole position. Oh. Baiting out the energy. It just like your mom said, it turks it takes extra energy to turn the uh, lamp on. So stop turning the lamp on and off. You're not gonna have any energy left over for the pulsar beam. Your mom was right. Spire on the way. Templar Archives as well. This Spire, I think, is for Mutus. This is not responding to any sort of silly Stargate. Now, it does depend. Like, the timing of it being scouted is a huge deal. If you see the Spire, like, three-quarters of the way done, that's huge. If you see it when it's already finished... It actually, the, the best time to be scouted for Scarlet is like when it's halfway done, because you know it's scouted, and then maybe you just don't even build mutas at all. Maybe you can cancel the Spire. But if it's already done, you gotta scramble to react. If it's three quarters of the way done, well then Scarlet's already kind of committed. It's one of those like, they're building a Dark Shrine, but are they building a Dark Shrine? <laughs> or researching Cloak for Banshees. Two Archons give a lot of stopping power to this push. Scarlet trying to have the Mutas, the Roaches, the Banelings, all at the same time. Fourth base, not going to happen. Puck putting together a quick Immortal Archon push. I think he's going to... Uh, is it recall time? Are we getting out? Recall is the Prism as well. I believe the Observer... Well, the Observer is spotting Mutas now. Oh, recalled to the main. It's an Archon drop defense, which is risky, but also really the only option right now. Phoenix is being built. Yep. Good luck with that. The Archon's the only way they, these things can really move around. Oh, no, 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 no. Watch out. Uh, kind of select all army action. There is no... The Archon locked out. Okay, this is getting dicey. Oh, no. Okay. There's not that much here. Down goes one of the Oracles. So, unfortunately, even if Puck can hold to 200 supply, which is looks to be the objective, he's going to really struggle to, to move out on the map. Because Scarlet's going to be pretty much permanently waiting outside the base. Maybe not waiting, maybe just going for it, because Storm is not done. There aren't that many Archons. Force field going to be incredible. Great force fields, but down goes the Prism. One Archon locked in the base. More Banelings are on the way. you got to be real careful. Okay, we're out of force field here. The splits, how are they doing? The Phoenix is helping out Puck with some great Protoss splits here. Scarlet getting a little ahead of herself, I think, attacking here. Only 68 drones as well. This was not like, oh, I'm maxed out. I have unlimited money. That went a lot better for Puck than I think anybody involved was expecting. Because the Phoenixes were doing a good job with the Mutas. They were just enough of them. The Archons and Force Fields were boxing out enough. And so far... Doubling down on the Mutas is never... It, that's it, It's a Muta risk. The pun is correct. Because... Even though you can get 20, 25 mutas, they can all fly into the storm and not come out. It is... It only takes a little bit more than one storm of damage. And they're all gone. So... They regenerate pretty quickly, but only if they're still alive. I have the best facts. The charge lot's not quite spotted here. How many mutas? 15 against two phoenixes. 
Puck's going to have some hard choices here. It's going to be nearly impossible to micro against this. There's just too many. Damage will be done. The bo he, he boxes out. The base is under attack. The Phoenixes are still intact. A lot of the gateways depowered on the edge of the base. Possibly the worst place those could have been. The Templar Archives is also about to be exposed as well. More Phoenixes on the way. There's just not enough to really deal with this. Is that even a super pylon? Oh my god. It's not. The Lings are in the third. The army, it's going to have to just be some sort of base trade all in. The charge lot's going to find an opportunity. The problem is, a lot of the times Protoss players will wait until this moment. And at this moment, Puck, well, Scarlet can just make 80 Banelings. Well, not 80 Banelings. You get the idea, though. And if at some point there's not enough anti-air... Here are the Banes. Everything Puck can get before all the Mutas are together. Storm is done. There's only one Archon with the army, though. That's not enough. More Archons coming up. The next round of Banelings. The Protoss army falls. And Scarlet swarms through. Two to one. Decisive victory. Puck not ready for the quick spire. The quick spire, relatively quick spire. The spire that caught Puck somewhat off guard. The greater or the regular one. The factor in both these games. We will see. Unfortunately for Puck, like... That one didn't look close. It looked like... I mean, what was that? There was that kind of attack on the 4th that cancelled the 4th. That was it. Everything from there was uh, off script. Scarlet one game away. Or... Puck on Ephemeron. Like, it's always fun to watch Puck play. Because even when he's losing, it's it's oftentimes... It's about Shut up, Tank. Uh, <clears throat> even when he's losing, it, it oftentimes is an entertaining game. That, that game was an exception to the rule. But all right, Puck. His life here in the Damon Amazing Mega Cup slash Damn Cup is on the line. Game number four. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to Damon for sponsoring the whole event. Make sure to thank him in the chat. Otherwise, this wouldn't have happened. At least give him his superficial likes in the Twitch chats. And Drick it for organizing and bringing everybody together and being an admin. As always, use that community command. So we were getting there, Drick it. Calm down. Skylet's done with this. That's a 12 pool. That's a 12 pool, Lester. A cheesy type of Zerg. And guess what, Puck? Oh my god. Puck is... I don't even know what he's doing. I don't know, like, is he pro... This is, like, worst case scenario. Zerglings are about to come out, and Puck is going off, like, into the sunset. For a proxy. It's, uh... This is a game that could end by the three minute mark. The one game Scarlet doesn't hatch first is the game Puck doesn't scan. This is what we call a disaster. Well.
I, uh, I don't even know if he saw the wings. It's, I like, we're gonna have to see some top tier probe micro. Probe's not well known for their ability to fight zerglings. Oh my god, that one zergling. The dev being chrono boosted. Scarlet's just making drones behind this. It's, uh. It's not great. Oh, an opportunity. A nice surround, but still gonna lose a whole lot of probes in the process. Oh no. Okay. Oh my. Just going straight for the probes. Can't blame him for that. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. So, that's how that ends. Thank you to Puck. Thank you for watching the series. We're not done with the tournament, but... But, um... Puck has completed uh, his efforts. Tough day.